The building of the house is progressing step by step. We accompanied the entire construction with the camera for more than half a year. In the first part, earthworks and floor slabs were carried out. In part 2, masonry, part 3, roof. And in part 4, electrical installation and the windows. Now comes the installation of the heating, plumbing and plaster. The heating installation starts with earthworks. In general, the construction company Braille relies on modern, energy-efficient systems for the heating installation, heat pumps. Air heat pump or optionally with an additional charge is here at the Bloodhouse, geothermal heat pump with geothermal collectors. With this system, the heat from the ground is used for heating. To install the collectors, the earth must be removed to below the frost limit, approximately 1 meter 20 deep. In order to heat the house sufficiently, the collector field needs a correspondingly large area. The rule of thumb here is, approximately, one and a half times the area of the living space. For the Bloodhouse house, house with 140 square meters, that is approximately, 200 square meters collector area. Since the space for storing the overburden is scarce, the fitter works in stages, and first opens only half of the area. The earth collectors are PE-coated copper pipes. When it is started up, in the pipes then circulates refrigerant that absorbs geothermal energy. Important when laying, the surface must be free of larger stones or debris so that the pipes are not damaged. All pipe starts and pipe ends are later connected to the inlet and outlet pipe of the heat pump, each using a distributor bar. Also important for the collector installation, do not place the pipes too close together, otherwise the heat pump will extract too much heat from the earth there and icing could occur. Finally, the pipes are fixed with sand so that they do not move. The first half of the collector field is done and can be filled up again. Delicate instinct is the order of the day here. The first layer of sand must be extremely careful on the pipes. That nothing breaks and nothing shifts. The area above the collector field can be used as a garden area, but must not be built on. Otherwise, the geothermal energy, which arises primarily from solar radiation and precipitation, would be too low. The next day, the fitter also completes the second half of the collector array. At the end you can only see the chamber manifolds, into which the pipe ends and the connections for the heat pump converge. Next stage, the plaster. Before it starts, the walls must be prepared, seal windows and set plaster profiles. The plaster profiles, also called plaster rails, ensure smooth finishes, straight plaster edges and also serve as edge protection. Plaster profiles made of wood come into the door openings. However, unlike the metal rails, they are removed later. Plaster profiles were also applied to the outer walls on all edges, at window openings and in the plinth area. We were not allowed to film the plaster work itself, since the plasterer were unfortunately very camera shy. The plastering of the walls, however, can be explained quickly and easily. The plaster comes to the construction site in the silo as dry mortar. From here it goes into the mixing machine. 
There it is made into spray plaster with water and then sprayed onto the walls. Gypsum plaster is used inside. Except in the bathroom, because of the higher air humidity, lime cement plaster is used. Smooth the plaster with a screed board, let it bond and later the plaster is sanded smooth. The plaster thickness is approximately 1 cm at the end. Incidentally, plaster not only has an aesthetic function, but also improves the indoor climate and the thermal insulation. The plaster can absorb humidity from the room and release it again if necessary. The outer facade is also finished. At least almost. The plinth was covered with plinth plaster and the first render film is on the walls. A lightweight fiber render based on lime cement. Single layer, 1.5 cm thick, with light aggregate. Open to diffusion and ideal as a breathable building envelope. Four weeks later, the finishing coat is added. After two days the plaster is, at least superficially, sufficiently hardened and the plumbing installation can start. The sanitary facilities are built using the modern in-wall system. It starts with the wall-hung frames on which will be attached on, later, left, toilet bowl and right, sink. Thanks to the in-wall technology, cisterns and pipes disappear behind drywall pre-walls. Milling the walls for pipes is also no longer necessary. So that everything fits later, both frames must have the same height and the same wall distance and be in balance. Perfect. Now the frames can be screwed to the wall. The frames are also fixed to the floor. For fitter Roland Budzik, routine work. He has been active in the heating, sanitary area for a long time and is responsible for the entire installation in the house. My function is foreman. I have two or three people under me, who I guide on this construction site and we do the plumbing and heating installations. That means all the pipelines and when this is done, the screed comes in and if at some point the tiler was there, we will also assemble the objects, hang sinks on the wall, toilets, mixer taps, bathtubs and all that. So it takes a little while until the bathrooms are complete. But, the fitter can already attach the retaining bolts for the toilet bowl. Now it's going to the drain. Important here, Vaseline. So the pipes can be easily put together and, above all, disassembled. Because in order to find the exact length for the drain, it has to be inserted, measured. Son. Deburred and then inserted again. The length is right now. But something is still missing. It is a so-called condensation hose. Such a line can also start to sweat, form condensate. The pipe comes from outside into a warm room. There are certain cold bridges where a pipe can start to sweat. And this isolation actually takes up this thing. Now the rubber flange has to be adjusted. Attach, hook in, cuff on. Toilet can flush. Nice. Then continue with the next drain. This is where the sink comes in. The drain is mainly used to drain the main bathroom on the upper floor, which is located directly above the guest toilet.
The fitter also has again to plug, measure, and saw to connect to the wash basin. The drain pipes are, by the way, so called HT pipes, high temperature pipes made of polypropylene, heat resistant and chemical resistant, and recognizable by the typical gray color. The drains are done. Now the lead pipes. They have to go through the wall into the utility room. That is where the water comes from. The pipes are composite pipes made of polyethylene with an aluminum core. Meanwhile standard for house installation. Much more practical than the copper or iron pipes that used to be common. Easy to bend and connecting is also very easy without welding or soldering. This is an expander, so that I can now get fittings on this pipe, like a T fitting, a branch, I have to widen the pipe. Clean up nicely, then I can slide this into each other and fix it with this throw. There's a special tool for that. Finished. The fitter sets now the so-called wall plates for the connection to the wash basin tab. We have the hot water on the left and it gets a connection up to here. For this, the fitter also takes composite pipe again. The pipes are already pre-insulated with a 10 mm thick layer of PE foam and red protective film. Can be used for all indoor water pipes. For both warm and cold water. The thicker insulation is only required for pipes in the floor area. Of course, there is also insulation over the connection points. Hot water would be ready. Now the cold water pipe. The inflow comes again from the utility room. From here it is now easier to push the second line through. The installation is carried out in exactly the same way as for the hot water connection. However, the fitter installs a junction AT fittings, because the cistern also hangs on the line. Done. Showers and bathtub were later piped in the same way. The in-wall installation is also completed in the bathroom on the upper floor. Total time of plumbing installation, 4 days.